Liz. Oh, I can't hear you. You're muted. There you go. Hello. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Oh gosh, yeah, let me just, hang on, let me take this background off and I want to show you something. Use virtual background. All right, can you see the balloons? Oh, wow. They're taller than I am. <laughs> oh. Uh, so my friend came with them. I don't know how she got them in the car and it's like, what oh. am I going to do with these? What am oh. I going to do with these balloons? In fact, I'll probably leave it on today. Crazy. Oh, now yeah. let me mute myself. No, don't mute yourself here. Yeah, we have a chat first, so okay. it's big chat time. Big chat. <laughs> so I'm just manning the uh, manning. The, oh, it's Haley with the background. Hi. I wanted you all to see my balloons before I put my background. On. <laughs> I my, need to turn it. My mic is so loud. I need to turn it down. Good. It's a bit of a giveaway, Stella. It's got your age on them. Yeah. <laughs> It could be the other way up, 90. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> you might feel like it, but you don't look like it, I promise. Thank you. That's is there any just... that gin left yet still? No. My, friends, <laughs> my friend Mary came with a big bottle of blackberry gin. Let me tell you, yum, yum. And then no. I to help me drink it. So there is that much left in the bottle. Now. Sounds perfect. <laughs> It was very nice. And then, of course, I had my annual health check on Tuesday and I had to lie a lot about the alcohol I drink. <laughs> they always double it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> As a nurse, we always well, double what everybody says. I very rarely, honestly, very rarely drink. And I did sort of say all this, but uh, I did go and look at my, uh, what she put on my NHL, NHS app and she did actually put zero. So that's, 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 all, cool. that's all right. So then. I did check. Because, <laughs> yes, I know. And I, you know, it's very rare, but yeah, I did have a few, few little drinkies. Few Aww. little drinkies. Hello, Good. Marie. You're all quiet. Don't forget you're on mute. <laughs> you mute, yes. We're gonna have that written on everybody's grave, aren't we? <laughs> right. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Oh. I can now. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. Welcome hello. to the crazy people. Oh, it's like that, is it? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> so, been known. are you um do you cover four different subjects each week each we month, cover or? all sorts of things the lovely linda who on my screen is sat next to you she oh. organizes us all right and mate and Haley oh, and i just sit here and do it don't we Haley? yeah it's not like that <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we do have uh, three sections. So we're going to talk health and well-being first. Uh, then we have business shout outs. Uh, and then we talk about community. So, okay. you know, different things. You'll see as it goes on. You're in the middle <laughs> bit. So I'll hold okay. in there. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's quite good. It's quite good fun. It's quite good fun. So we've been doing this for over a year. We didn't start doing it. It was, uh, we used to do it every week in the first lockdown. <laughs> And it was a good way of everybody keeping track of who was open, who was closed, what was coming up, the medical centre, what was cracking on there, the vaccinated, well, no one vaccinations then, was it, tested. Mm. Uh, and uh, we, we've sort of, after August, we kept it up just doing one a month. And uh, we just have an hour and we wow. have a good, um, lot of people look at us on Facebook Live. Yes. Uh, and then we post it on our YouTube channel as well oh, so after yeah. the event. Yes. Hopefully. Yes, can, I always um... have to say hopefully at that point, but <laughs> not doing too bad. Although uh -huh. Facebook has completely changed the way you, you go live now, I noticed. Good job I practiced yesterday. Oh, you must have known. Absolutely, 100% different. So in another four minutes i'll be doing something complicated in the background so. oh. <laughs> just watching we've got a pesky squirrel in our garden it keeps yeah. just trashing my feeders he's back again oh. <laughs> you want to catapult oh he's eating it in four days it's lit it's been eaten <laughs> We had a hair in the uh, in the back the other day, and we've seen this hair before. But we thought oh, they built all these extra houses, 
but no, it was there gambling away yesterday. Yeah. Massive thing early in the morning. And then hooped we, off down the hedgerows. We've had two baby deers on the driveway the last two mornings. Ooh. Yeah. Very nice. We see, They're a bit lost, yeah. I think. Yeah, we, we're next to the fields and we see deer over there quite a lot. Yeah, we don't normally get them where we are because it's, yeah, but I don't know. They're a bit confused, I think. I think there's too much building going on and they well, don't know where to go. Well, saying in the newer capitizer that it's deer, whatever, deer love season. Yeah. So they're all busy <laughs> going around doing their love thing. I think that's a technical term. <laughs> in their love. <laughs> Oh, here's Mad Mary. Here's the dr gin drinker. Hello, Penny. <sighs> Mary's probably having a tea. A gin. A gin, yeah. <laughs> so how nice of her to bring me a bottle. How nice of her to bring me a bottle of gin she then drinks. There you Hi, go. Linda. Hi. How are you? Hello. Hello. Oh. Mary. Hi, Mary. Oh. Mary's still muted. It's a nice oh. evening tonight. I don't know how many it we, is. um, everybody will be sat drinking gin in the garden. Oh, maybe. They'll all pop in. They'll all pop in. Right. I'm just going to do the complicated things on Facebook. So talk amongst yourselves. I've got my coffee. Coffee. My coffee. That's okay. what she says. Mine looks like gin, but it's it's not. Oh, I've, I've just got just. water. It's water. <laughs> Mine looks like that. gin, but it's not. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. Hello. Mm. Oh. Somebody else is pouring out a beer in front of me, which I think is a bit off. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be done then. Are we are oh. live. We yeah, are I live. think we are. I think we might be on live. Yeah. Yes, there's true. lots of people up. Yeah, Hello. good. 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 Yes, calling conversation it is live now. That's a bit scary, isn't it? Well, it's actually much easier now, but it is very, very different. All right, is Jean. Oh, it's not that. that big 60 in the background. Oh, Mary. Mary, Mary. <laughs> If you turn to, the other way up, you'd be It would be 90, yeah. It's <laughs> nine, I mean. <laughs> I've moved it up here because it was scaring the robbers. Oh. The robbers yeah. or the robins? <laughs> the robbers. No, we don't have robbers, really. But not down here. It's too nice. No, that's, I best not say that because that's... Yeah. Yeah, Tempting we'd not say that. Yeah. I can say you've been in my salon, though. So, yeah. you, you know, you're yes, 10 years I younger have. now. Oh, right, she had very smart toenails. Yeah, I've got socks on today. So you can what see better it. place to spend your 60th birthday? I know, there wasn't really. Except I only made the uh, decision on the to top. cycle in my flip-flops in the rain oh, with oh, yeah, a bouquet we... of flowers sticking out oh. my backpack, you know? I know, I, I, I didn't warn you, did you, about that? But I did decide to absolutely throw it down, didn't I? I was actually thinking. But it was fine. It was okay. Okay, a little wet behind, but <laughs> other than that, no, it was fine. That's good. Okay, so I'm just keeping my eye on the waiting list. And then we'll, we'll give it two more minutes and then we'll crack on. But we are live on Facebook and we're recording. I have to tell you that as well. We are recording. Yeah. Oh, we we're actually record. on Facebook as well. Yes, we are, Mary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we nearly are every audiences. time. We are yeah. recording, but it's not for training purposes. No. No, no. <laughs> well, I won't put the whole of Don. I'll just put his ear. <laughs> uh, uh, wonderful ear it is too. No, you're better as it was. <laughs> no, you can't be here because you're the only man now. Oh, I'm sure that'll change. No, Michael might be here as well. Yeah, he's probably hiding. No, I've yeah. said now. Now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. now. In the present tense. <laughs> Right, so I am keeping my eye on the uh, on the waiting list. As, oh, we haven't got Julie yet, so we can't start with that, can we? Can't start no. with that, Julie. No, so we'll talk a bit longer. Oh, she'll pop in. Well, I've got some, the youngest have now had their vaccines, their first one. 
Which how how much younger? The under forties. Oh, that's very good. I know. I hope you've all had your vaccines. Very good. Yes. First one. First one. First one. one. <laughs> oh, yes, somebody else moved me. So in case Julie's been delayed or something, do, 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 do we... you want to do the PPG thing first, Linda? Yeah, it's a shame Julie's not here, but um, I just wanted to, to um, do a quick shout out. Um, I'm a member of the patient participation group of Colling and Medical Centre. I mean, there's a few of us here tonight, actually. Barbara is, Mary is, Penny is, Anne is, and Michael is, although we may not be here. Um, we've been operating for about three years now and a really successful group. And um, I thoroughly enjoy the work that we do with and um, for patients and with the medical centre. Um, we're looking for a couple of new members. Um, we normally run at about 14 and we're, we've um, had two people leave us. And so it's a shout out really to say if anybody is interested in coming along um, to see what we're about, um, you'd be very welcome. Um, the only qualification that you need to be on PPG is that you need to be a patient at the medical centre. That's it. Um, apart from that, it could be anybody. Um, we uh, meet once a month, but it's been Zoom whilst we've been locked down. So the commitment is for a couple of hours on the Monday morning once a month. And then we do um, various other things. So the primary role is about improving communication between the, the surgery and the patients and back again. And uh, we do some work in the waiting room sometimes. Um, and Mackie, who I can see there, um, <laughs> is on that. And we work on service improvement project, projects with the surgery. And we think we've been really successful in getting some um, working with the surgery to get some um, improvements. A lot of good ideas come from patients themselves. So um, if you're interested in any way at all, um, please get in touch with me either through the, the um, PPG Gmail address or I'll put my number up on, on the side on the chat or um, give the Medical Center a ring and, and they'll put you through to us. Um, just come and have a look at us and if, you, if you're interested or you know anybody that would be then we'd welcome you aboard. Uh, so, so tell me what sort of things you do Linda, sorry Mary, I half inch there. Give me some examples. So um, what we, we, a lot of the work that we were doing before um, lockdown was going out and speaking to community groups. I think our biggest role um, from day one has been improving communication. I think we're um, 7,500 patients across 34 villages and hamlets and spanning to Spanza County border. So an information um, changes fast in the NHS, as you'll all know. So getting a clear and consistent message out um, to all patients um, is, is one of the biggest challenges. So we put out regular um, village newsletter articles and... No, that's done by Mike. Yeah, and she's gone in the black hole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things is you might see posters on the notice boards um, Good. telling you about uh, if you have a bit of a cold, you don't turn up at the doctor's surgery, but give yourself elementary medication. And if you like, if you get a cough, if you get over <laughs> it, don't disturb the doctor because at the first cough, you turn up and think, ah. You know, it's using doctors for what they're really for. And if you can self-help yourself, then that's very important. So that's one thing. That's Linda's very good. Still asleep. Yeah, Linda's still friends. Linda's, yeah, I think she'll be going and coming back. I'm surprised she's not sending me a message. Uh, mm -hmm. Gina, Michael, have you got anything to add to that? <clears throat> and you're muted, so we can't hear anything. <laughs> Jean's in control. Not at the moment, thank you. I mean, it was a good speech, that. Yeah, very good. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, as if by magic, uh, the wonder of technology. And here's uh, the lovely Julie Reed. Um, Julie's always the uh, the starter offer of our uh, lovely uh, community conversation, uh, and she always keeps us up to date as what's happening down at the Collingham Medical Centre. So over to you, Julie. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you very much for that lovely intro, Stella. Um, so I take it, uh, Linda, done a bit about PPG. Is you that did, yeah. Super duper. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my monthly roundup then from the Collingham Medical Centre and the pharmacy. So there's a few things that have been happening and I've tried to limit it just to some essentials so that we don't uh, go on 
too long and uh, I overwhelm. So uh, there's lots of campaigns going about. So we'll start with COVID. There's lots of campaigns at the moment. There is a worry within the health sector that people are going to the younger cohorts because we've now released the cohorts for the 30 to 39 year olds. I'm not necessarily going to take up on the vaccine due to all the media um, attention around blood clots. So there is a campaign about to start and you'll start to see it around called Join the Millions. So it's really encouraging people to join the millions of people who have already had the COVID vaccine. So you'll start to see that. And the Nottinghamshire um, COVID service has now moved um, to join the National Booking Service. So all the bookings for them can be done on 119 or online. So they've, they've uh, amalgamated from there and moved away from swift queue. However, if patients or people have their swift queue appointment for their second vaccine, that will still stand, that appointment's still there. Um, but if you need to change it, you will have to move from swift queue and then contact the National Booking Service to do that. Um, in terms of, uh, you will have seen in the media in uh, uh, Boris's um, uh, 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 announcement this week, because of course we're looking now at proof of COVID vaccination statement. We've talked lots of times, a uh, status, sorry, we've talked lots of times about the NHS app and uh, how that can um, be a great thing. It helps you with your self-help tool. It gives you access to your medications, to your medical record. And it will now be one of the key ways you can have proof of your COVID-19 vaccination status. So I'll pop the um, website address in the chat again, just for those that are on the call. But I think most of the people that are, oh, look at you, Stella, showing off. I think <laughs> most, most of the people on the call are, are either doing it and know about it already anyway. So it's going to become more and more relevant. Lateral flow testing still continues. Um, you know, as we start to go around our communities a bit more and we can, uh, and restrictions are relaxed, um, a little bit and we can even do a bit of cautious hugging um, we still need to make sure that we test and trace um, and that we we make sure we keep ourselves our families and our communities safe and when we do get a positive um, test they are still happening albeit people aren't getting um, a lot of severe symptoms then please isolate so lateral flow tests are available free we are an nhs test and trace distribution point at the collingham pharmacy We've distributed over 200 packs since our last community conversation, um, but 200 packs is quite a small proportion of our community. So if anybody else or you can share the word, then please encourage people to come and pick a pack up. Uh, wearing masks, even though we're going into step three of the roadmap um, in the next week or so, the practice team at the moment, we're still going to continue to wear masks. We're still going to ask patients to wear masks and continue to sanitise hands as they enter the medical centre will obviously continually review that situation um, throughout. Um, the waiting room, you'll start to see, um, we, we're going to reorganise our seating and you'll start to see that change, but still maintain uh, social distancing so we can add a few more seats in there, particularly as we're starting to bring more services back online. Uh, we will continue to do telephone triage, um, although there are some limited clinical um, cases where the PCAs now will be able to book straight into a face-to-face -face appointment. And they're largely acute musculoskeletal um, um, symptoms. I can never say that word. So. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so we'll still do that. And again, if you have an appointment, but find that you get any COVID symptoms, please let us know. Please don't attend your appointment. Um, it, one, it allows us to release that um, time for uh, another member of our community, but also it makes sure that you can keep safe and you break the chain of spread. So that, that's what's uh, important about isolation. We have put on our website this last month, there's a, um, an, um, a national leaflet about isolating at home safely and all the things you can consider in order to do that. So that's on our website too for people who want a bit more information. So the sort of services that are starting to come back online. So the mammography unit has recently confirmed that they're coming back to the area. They'll be at the Newark Hospital. Uh, and so invitations for that service are starting to come back out at the moment. And there was an interesting fact that uh, the cancer services generally um, sort of shared recently and uh, really to encourage people to take up on their invitations to all screening programmes that we've got. You know, mammography is just one of them. But currently, a quarter of our cancer diagnoses are detected in their early stages of one or two. So that's a quarter we currently find in their early stages. 
the NHS long-term plan, because of all these screening programmes and because of the um, detection of um, early signs and symptoms, they predict that by 2028, we will hopefully um, identify 75%, so three quarters of our cancer, cancer diagnoses within those early stages. So that's great news. What it does need is a wealth of workforce. So there's lots of plans that you'll all hear in the, uh, you know, the media about the workforce that's being um, sort of recruited and developed and trained to do that. In the meantime, we need to be able to start to think about how we can protect all GP services, all hospital services, to be able to cope with that increased demand that is going to come, as well as the fact that we're all going to need them. So the more we can do self-help, and I just joined as Mary was quite um, eloquently putting it, the more we can self-help ourselves, use our pharmacy services, have great first aid um, kits, use the NHS app, and all those official channels will really help to reduce the demand for the smaller minor ailments and allow the services to focus on the more serious matters and have the opportunity to do that. Um, so we really want to be able to do that. So if you can help us do that, that would be fab. Uh, in terms of cervical screening, we've nearly cleared our waiting list now. It will certainly be cleared by the end of May. So we're now booking people straight into their cervical screening stops while we stay on that. And we continue to have rotors available two to three weeks in advance. I said last month we would return to two clear working days for medications. That is now happening. We've even managed to maintain that in the bank holiday week. So that was something uh, we were very proud of uh, to get back to service as normal. We've had a few questions about you said we did or are doing. So um, I was going to just go through those because that is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> just wanted to double go for it. it. Uh, so the sort of things that we've been asked for recently, and our PPG uh, are great at um, sort of firing a few of these at us. So one of the things is when will online booking of appointments become available again? Um, so as I talked earlier, we are still going to triage quite a lot, but we are starting to trickle in some um, routine work. So we have actually opened in the last week or so um, online appointments for shingles and pneumo vaccinations. So we've written and invited cohorts of patients who are eligible to say that uh, we have vaccines and please book in and you can book online. So we're going to start to trickle those in. And then we've got uh, the, another question was, I didn't know I needed to isolate following a positive lateral flow test. Um, so whilst we might find that a little um, surprising, people still say they don't know. So that's why the leaflet is now on the website. We've got uh, reduce the length of the opening message on the telephone system. So that is quite a recurring thing. <laughs> Since our last uh, meeting, we have shaved about 10 seconds off it and we are about to do another bit of a cut. So I wanted to actually get a feel, either nods or shakes of heads from people as to whether, I'd like to think everybody knows what a COVID symptom is. So there's quite a chunk of the message that describes them. Is that a sensible assumption do you think from people on the call do you think we can cut that out of that introductory message uh, i certainly do so. yeah absolutely okay. if we don't know now it's a poor flipping show isn't it? yeah okay i just wanted to double check because i was still very surprised to have had the comment about not knowing that they needed to isolate so and it's on uh, the packet and everything you do when you do know, your death know, but yeah okay uh, so, so good. Well, that will be one chunk that comes out then in the next month to shave a few seconds off as well. So that will be good. Um, the, we've had questions about why the practice um, cannot follow up on hospital appointments. So we've had a number of people, because obviously there are some delays in the hospital services. They're just starting to get back on track. Um, now, sadly, we don't have any bypass numbers for hospital services. We have to do exactly the same as, um, you know, any user of a hospital service. And we have to phone through the switchboard and, and work our way through the queues. So as, uh, our ask is that actually as patients, you often have far more influence in obtaining information from the hospital because you're the one that's been referred. So if it is possible for you to call and then to ask those questions of the hospital and try and get test results or follow up uh, information first, then that would be super because that would just, again, help us to focus on the new referrals that we need to get out and all the new insurance reports, which are now starting to come in as people's lives resume. 
So um, that's just an ask from us. Uh, and then uh, when will we start to do medication reviews? So this really came from our PPG this week. So we have started to do our medication reviews. Throughout the uh, pandemic, we were always supporting people and anybody who had any concerns about their medications or the long-term conditions, that's entirely what we're here for. But we are starting to reintroduce the routine medication reviews again. They're going to be in line with your birthday month. So for those of you who've been registered with the medical centre for a while, you'll know we try to do that. So we remember that a little easier. And um, we're, we're going to follow the same model that we do for our diabetes long term conditions, where if you have bloods or any observation monitoring, BPs, uh, weight, height, all those sort of things, foot checks, so you'll have an appointment with the HCA who will do all that for you. And then a week or so later, you'll have a follow up call with the appropriate clinician, which will either be the nurse specialist of that uh, long term condition or a clinical pharmacist. So that was really just to let everybody know. Had mine uh, yesterday, Julie, my annual health go. check. It was fabulous. Oh, brilliant. Of course. <laughs> Because it's my birthday. So oh, is it your birthday? Yes. Yeah, so, can you birthday. see my balloons? Everybody's got to admire my balloons. Oh, but yeah. Month, and you've had it. So, I'm pleased that that's a working example. Yes, it's just to how... show it does work. <laughs> so, we are trying to get back online. So, uh, so those sort of things. So, we're delighted to confirm as well. We've got a couple of changes in our team. We had a vacancy for a respiratory specialist nurse. It was just at the beginning of the pandemic. So, we chose not to advertise at that point. So we've recently been recruited and we're delighted that our nurse will be starting with us in June. So we'll be inducting her and people will start to see nurse Sarah join the team and do some of those uh, medication reviews there. Um, we talked last uh, month about Dr. Fern just taking a little bit of a break from clinical work. And so Dr. Francis De Silva has settled in. He's enjoying being at Collingham and he, he will remain with us till September. It is a little bit sad, though, that Dr. Shah has decided that he's not going to settle in Collingham. We always have a settling in period of six months to a year, um, and Dr. Shah feels that Collingham uh, is not for him. However, we've been out to recruit. Um, we uh, do have a good reputation within the health community, so we have been successful in recruiting, and we have now recruited two GPs. I only reported one to the PPG on Monday because we hadn't had conversations confirmation of the second but we have recruited two GPs and they will start with us in September so a Dr Rees and a Dr Ever so we're we're very pleased with that and we'll be welcoming those so I think oh and the last thing not last but certainly not least um, as we all start to return back to our previous vocations and uh, lives before Covid um, lockdowns we have the same with our medicines delivery driver so we've had a great help from Rob. So a big shout out for Rob. He has really helped us through um, the pandemics and helped deliver meds to people. Um, but he needs to be going back to his former vocation. So we do have a little bit of a vacancy for anybody who fancies a few hours a week driving around our community and uh, delivering medications. That is a paid role. Come and find me and we'll talk about it. If anybody's interested. That's brilliant, Julie. As always, very informative, uh, very interesting. And uh, yeah, as always, I big up the uh, Collingham Medical Centre. Um, you read, it's been all in the papers over the weekend. You know, some people, uh, they won't even answer the phone. You know, never mind, wait for the message. <laughs> but uh, it's just, you know, I think we're just so lucky. As frustrated as it gets sometimes, we are very lucky. And thank you and all the staff for all the work they do there. And uh, yeah, very lucky indeed. Uh, anybody got any questions for Julie before she escapes? Can I ask a question? You certainly can. <laughs> Julie, um, I'm starting engagement with public and patients at New York Hospital. Can I get my, um, what's it, lateral flow testing? Do I actually um, book in or how is it done? No, no, you just come and pick up a pack and it has seven tests in it. It's free. Just come to the um, pharmacy and, uh, and collect one and they'll give you one over the counter. And then I get uh, bring it back, presumably, for them no, to find out. No, you self-test at home and you report online. All the information is in the pack um, and oh, instructions brilliant. on how to do it. So it's all at home and self-testing. 
it's it's Brilliant. very easy and I do very it twice a, I do it twice a week it's very straightforward you know you sort of do it in the morning and by the time you've had your Rice Krispies, it, it's showing negative, hopefully. Um, but it's very, very straightforward to do. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, our next item should have been the Collingham Rural Advice Centre, but Linda's having great troubles with her lovely internet. So that's sad score for you. Uh, but she'll be back. She'll be back. So I'm going to hand over to Hayley. Uh, and we're going to move on to uh, the business uh, shout out. Thank you, Stella. I have just had a message from Linda. Um, yeah, she's having trouble get, getting through. So she just wanted to shout out um, the Royal Advice Centre's AGM is on Monday, the 24th of May at 2.30 in the Memorial Hall. Um, all welcome um, there. So I think she just, if she can get on, I, I'm sure Linda may have a few other things to to add but that was just the main thing I think so uh, yeah. Monday the 24th of May at 2 30 unless anybody else has got anything to add that knows more than I do <laughs> regards this she'll she'll try and be back she says she's got a massive Microsoft update <laughs> oh. oh just when you don't want it <laughs> story of my life <laughs> so so I'm uh, now passing over um the business to the business section um, so this is the, an opportunity for businesses in Collingham um, and also surrounding villages just to give, um, you know, some shout outs for their business. As um, I have a business in, in the village, it's a really good opportunity to come on and, and either promote your business or um, just, just let people know where you are and what you do. So, and it's definitely helped me, you know, when I first... Um, you know, in, in first lockdown. So, but thankfully I've been back open now for a few weeks. So uh, we're going strong. So hopefully it will stay that way for the businesses. So I think we've got Sarah Chapman on first. Hi, can, can you hi. see me? We can't see you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Oh, that's no good, right. <laughs> Is that better? There you are, there you are. Yeah, we can yeah, see you now. Sarah. <laughs> hi. So, so thanks for welcome, being nice Sarah. Place for the staff at the, sur the surgery, by the way. That's I'm one of them. <laughs> oh, lovely. So, um, so you're going to chat to us about your charming jewellery. Yes, right. So, lockdown, horrible for everybody. Yes. Mentally, physically, the lot of it, awful. So, decided I'd start something different, something new, something I'd never done before. Taught myself. Um, picked up an awful lot of things via YouTube um, and started making different bits of jewellery. Started easy, started just adding charms to necklaces and earrings. Um, and then I just carried on and developed a bit more and learned a bit more and learned how to do different things. So I've only been doing this since November. Um, and as I say, I started easy. So I don't know whether you'll be able to see this or not, but this is one of the things that I've made now. And this is all completely handmade. So there's no chain on there. I've linked everything together. Wow. So I'm really chuffed with how some of them are turning out. Mm -hmm. They're a lot better than what I'd hoped. Um, I've just started doing a market stall, which is the, um, the ape market at the end of every month, the last Sunday of every month till October. And it's on Newark Market. It's not terribly well advertised. No, um, I've not heard of that one. No. <laughs> um, I did the first one at the end of April. Sadly, there wasn't very many people about, so didn't do very well. I, I made back the money that it cost me for the stall, so I was happy with that, but, you know, could be better. So the next one's the 30th of May. Everybody, you know, it's just an open market on Newark Marketplace um, on a Sunday. Hopefully, nice weather, bank holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. Um just come down and have a look and see what there is there's lots of different people there with lots of different businesses of their own things they make um and i will be standing on that store with my jewelry it's um it's all handmade and it's all individual there isn't two of anything mm -hmm. if there is it's a different color so i can do whatever anybody would like me to do I've even done a repair for one that one particular lady um, wanted a necklace repairing. And I said, well, I haven't done it before, but I'll give it a go. And she was over the moon with it. So feedback like that makes me feel really good. 
Um, and after the problems with lockdown and everything that was going on and the, the mental and the busyness of work and everything, those little comments are great. They, they really brighten your day and brighten up your life. And I'm so positive about this little business. Um, I just want it to work. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's exciting. It's keeping me busy. It's keeping me sane. Um, and it's just it's just helping with everything that's going on at the moment um and I'm even you know going to work now I'm a lot more relaxed than I was um and that really you know that this is really helping me to do that so yes yeah, so that's that's me um I turned 50 this year and I started my own business <laughs> that's fantastic so how do people find you then are you on Facebook Instagram am, yeah I'm on Facebook um and uh, the Facebook page is simply charming jewelry I very often uh, post things into the Collingham Facebook site. I share my things on there. Mm -hmm. um, wherever in this country is posted for free. If it's out of the country, then there is a there will be a charge for postage because it will be a bit more. Um, but yeah, free posting. Um, I'm in the village. I live in Collingham. So um, it can be either collected from me. I can perhaps deliver it to your door or, you know, whichever. So, so yeah, I'm... I'm really sort of eager to do things for people that they might want to cheer them up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I did try um, over this lockdown for Valentine's to make a few bits and pieces, knowing full well that the shops weren't open, but unfortunately it didn't as, um, appeal to anybody at the time. So, <laughs> but I have to say, I just, just keep, keep showing off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a, I, for me as well definitely the repairs I think that's a thing that you could definitely probably push a bit more because I do think that repairs can be the one thing that you know people do want as well I know myself yeah. you know you just and it can be something so fiddly you've just got not got the right tools but you want to you want to keep it yeah it might be quite precious and important to you so I yeah. definitely think that's that's another another avenue. But what a great way to turn it around and and keep yeah. it positive and keep your mind your mind busy. And I think as well, if it's if it's local and it's something that's been made, you know, personally, I think it always seems, especially as well for a gift, it's much nicer if you're going to yeah. give it for somebody as well. Yeah. So yeah, well, I've got nice little organza bags as well that I I put the jewelry in. They're all um, on, on little cards like these um, as well. So they're all quite tidy. Um, earrings are on earring cards and in little packets. I've got necklaces and earrings together as a set and they're on a, their own little ball, um, little cards with uh, in a packet as well. So they're all nicely packaged for people if they're for gifts as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that has has come out of it as well. People have had the time to find hobbies again I know myself I I sort of started doing like calligraphy again and you know I think we all had that time to think that we didn't have before we were on just on this yeah you know we all weren't we and I think I think that's something that has you know a positive thing that has come out of it definitely I mean even if we get back to some kind of normal that we've had before mm -hmm. this is my normal now so I will continue yeah. to do this because I'm loving every minute of it. I've, I've found that I've got loads up here to make this jewelry and I can think, I like this, I'm gonna design this one. And then I've, I've designed most things that I've done now. You know, I've, I'm getting more and more confident with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, confidence has been a real downfall for me for a very, very long time, for years and years. Mm. And this is, really helping and I'm I'm feeling so energized by it um and I just I just want to share it with everybody um oh, so so yeah I just this is why I want to get on that market again and and hopefully <laughs> there'll be people around but as I say that's not really very well advertised so uh it's very quite disappointing there's a another lady who also advertises on the Collingham site now and again and she does the Newark market on a Saturday Mm -hmm. um, and she did the one on the Sunday as well that I was on um, and she she agreed it's not advertised very well at all um, 
No, you'd possibly think maybe with it being a Sunday, maybe people think there wouldn't be one or yeah. whether it's because it's the day or maybe they just need to do a little bit more advertising. Yeah, it. Just, just, it just doesn't seem to be advertised anywhere. I got them a little magazine through the other day for the things that are going on in and around the area. Mm-hmm. And there was a tiny little advert right at the bottom of all the rest of the market things that are going on. So people wouldn't have noticed that. I mean, I deliberately looked to see if there was anything there, but it's not something people would have really noticed. So no, no, it's hard to get it out there. I, I keep putting the advert on uh, on the Collingham Facebook site to say, you know, this is where we're going to be and the Witham St. Hughes one as well. But I don't, you know, not everybody's going to see that. Um, not everybody's still coming out. No, but... no. Mary, did you want to say something? Yeah, um, Sarah, two questions. One is, what is your jewellery made of? I mean, is it semi-precious? Is it costume? Is it glass? You know, I'm, what materials do you use? That's one so, question. The second one is, it used to be the case that Watsons in the paper were free. Now, I don't know whether you can jack into that in local papers and say, uh, if the market's not advertised in what's on i don't see why you couldn't try and get your own store advertised in what's on if you understand. yeah it's worth a try bending it or getting the organizers to put something in but is it done by the town council Do they- um i think yeah it's newark newark town newark council and, yeah, yeah. Newark market people that do it yeah, yeah. So maybe you need to find out somebody within that group that you can pressurize to put more pressure on yeah counselor who i also think that um you know they've maybe been playing things down a bit until this week when you know some of the covid restrictions i'm sure nobody wants crowds of people anywhere yeah um, but uh you know maybe it's you know a trickle and, and let's face it it's so blooming cold who wants to be out yeah but, oh it, yeah. it was the weather's that first perking one. up now <laughs> that first stall it was really cold mm. um in answer to the question the majority of the beads that i have are glass yeah um i try and because they're extremely pretty um i have um crackle what they call crackle glass beads and uh, if you get them in the right light they actually sparkle um i do have some that aren't glass but i still try and get nice nice looking ones i've got a few um imitation gemstones as well um so yes um they are they're, they're very very nice uh, stones that i have so i mean for instance i've got this this necklace that i made as well so this big love heart is it's glass yeah and all of the rest of the beads on there the colored ones they're all glass um it's quite heavy um it's not something you'd want to wear all day but <laughs> um but yeah it's uh oh, sorry. It's, i just wanted to get some feel yes they they they're all good strong beads um I, I i personally don't like the plastic ones because they just don't feel right <laughs> Well, I, I, to I, the I, touch you know yeah I, I can see some of your fun because I've had fun re-threading um, necklaces that belong yeah. to my aunt and my mother from the 30s yeah and they are very beautiful um, yeah I bought a few things from um, charity shop just to get the beads off them yeah um yeah. so so yeah I'm even <laughs> anything that I can find um it's, yeah, it's really helpful. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do try and have decent beads. I always pick the good ones, and a lot of mine are, are either glass or ceramic beads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. The other, the other good ones when things start getting a little bit more back is the Collingham Show and yeah. um, the Little Village Fates and things like that that uh, I did a lot of when I first came into the village. And I think um, the Collingham Show definitely is a really good one to. Um, and all the smaller ones, events like that, once things start getting back. Yeah, well, I understand, where we can do that, things. They, I understand that they do a little one at the uh, Memorial Hall. Uh, they're going to yeah. start doing it the first Tuesday of July and the, the last Saturday. Yeah. I can't do the first Tuesday because I'm on holiday. Um, but mm. uh, but I was thinking of looking at that as well because it's in, in the village. It's easy yes. for me to get to as well. Yeah, the, the preschool as well, they do an event near Christmas 
um, where they yeah. ask local businesses to get involved in, in the um, Memorial Hall. That's a really good. So anything like that, that's a c- community, I think works really well. Everybody likes to support everybody. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck with it. Thank and you. keep 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 doing um, the right things to make you feel a bit more confident. And yeah, yeah what a great thing to do. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for coming thank you on. for this opportunity. It's been great. So next we have Marie. Yes, Hi. Marie. She's been sat waiting patiently there. So uh, you're going to uh, chat to us about your art. Yes, I can see some beautiful yeah. examples in the background there that I've been. I'm guessing that is your art, is it? It is. Yes. yes. Um, it's not just fantastic nice. wallpaper. <laughs> Well, I thought um, Magnolia was a bit boring, you see. So well, thought, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I've covered, uh, this is actually my studio, this room. It's not very big, but I've covered all the walls with my art so that I can look at it and see, um, you know, what I can do and how I can improve things because I do my own painting as well as running art classes. So it's just nice to have my work around me so that I can get some inspiration and see what I need to do, and what I need to change. So I've always, I'm always changing the walls and I've always got paintings and canvases leaning up. In fact, trip over them some of the time because (laughs) they're all over the place on the floor. (laughs) But um, yeah, so I do painting for my, you know, I do my own painting, but I'm running art classes or I will be running art classes um, at the Collingham Youth and Community Centre. Um, from the end of June, the 30th of June is when the first class starts. And I decided to wait until then just to make sure that all the restrictions were lifted and that, you know, I didn't want people to be scared of coming and being inside. So I actually set that date so that it's um, after all the restrictions are going to be lifted, hopefully. (laughs) Um, So, hope yeah, fingers crossed. Um, I've got a few different um, classes that I'm going to be running. Um, three of them are for adults and um, I've got one on Saturday morning for secondary school children that will just be once a month or you know occasionally that's not going to be a regular one but the adult classes are going to be every week um, and I'm doing six week courses so if you're interested in drawing that's what I'm starting off with drawing and it'll be a six week drawing course, learning all about the basics of um, how to hold your pencil, how to do tone, texture, shape, how to learn to observe and draw what you see, um, and just teaching all those basic skills. And then at the end of that, to actually produce a piece of art, a still life study, applying all those skills that you've learned over the five, five weeks. Um, And then hopefully if I've got enough interest, I'd like to then start a second, another course after that, which will be another six week course um, about painting. So that'll be painting skills, looking at painting techniques, looking at colour wheel and then applying those to uh, a painting in the last couple of weeks of the course. So that's what I've got. Um, The courses run on um, the evening course on Monday evenings. This is after the 30th of June. Um, The um, evening course is going to be, uh, let me just look at my notes. The evening course is going to be Monday evening between seven and nine, uh, starting from the second, uh, sorry, the 5th of July. Um, And that's for those that can't make it in the day. And then I've got two daytime courses, one on um, Wednesday morning between 10 and 12 and one on Friday afternoon between two and four. So there's a few different options. If people can't make one day, they might be able to make the other one. Um, So it's beginners and intermediates. So um, if anybody's interested in that, um, they can get in touch with me. I am on Collingham Facebook page and a few other Collingham Facebook pages. Um, So people can look me up and I can send details to them if they're interested to know a bit more information or if they want to register to join one of the classes. So I've actually got some examples to show you. So starting off, if you can see that, I'll try not to get the reflection. (laughs) So this is just an example of some of the basics that we start off with, learning about how to draw um, spheres, 
um, cones and then do tonal strips, learning how to use pencils and looking at textures as well. These are all by students um, from previous classes that I've done. I used to do them in my home, um, but then with the lockdown that all stopped. And then I decided that it was better to do it in the hall, a hall where there's more space um, and we can all spread out a lot more. Uh, there's a, another one there from a previous student. And these are all beginners. These are all students that were new to um, drawing. So this is what they've produced. So that's um, still life there. You see that? Doesn't show up very well being pencil. Um, but then onto the colour um, and painting, then um, there's this learning about the colour wheel and how colours are mixed and how you put colours together and then mixing colours as well. And then looking at um, painting techniques. Um, and here I've got some examples of different painting techniques that you can use and then apply to a painting. So that's really helpful to do those techniques before you start actually doing a still life or drawing a subject that you're interested in. So that's it. <laughs> um, so I've, did I've, you say it was in the mem did you say Memorial Hall? No, it's no. Um, at the Collingham Youth and Community Centre right. on Low Street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's there. It's great to hear that things are starting to come back as well you know it's mm. it's it's nice I mean my little girl has just started her dancing back again she's not danced for over a, you know a year and it's quite mm. nice I'm, I mean she would love to do one of your art classes I think she needs to we get it all over the place <laughs> but yeah it's um yeah. it's so it, it really is nice to 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 have this back on the conversation as well you know it's been a while since we've had people you know, talking about these groups and that things are actually going to be going ahead yes. physically, you know, not just on Zoom. Yeah, no, so, it's going to be great, isn't it? Just to be yeah. able to see people again and just yeah. to have that social interaction. Exactly. Um, I mean, um, Zoom's been great for, I mean, I do yoga Zoom and, you know, and it has been great. And I know that, it, you know, it's here to stay and, and things, but some things yeah. like what you do, mm -hmm. you know, need to be, you know, yeah. actually there. So that's no, it, it's that's it. I mean, I'm I have, sure it'll be very, very popular. I think people yeah, will be queuing yes. up. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I've got um, quite a few students already signed up, but I have got spaces left. So mm -hmm. if anyone is interested, you know, if they get in touch with me um, and then I can just tell them more about the course and anything else that they want to know. But yeah. it's going to be so good to start mm -hmm. um, getting out again um, and just mixing with people and oh that's the phone oh. <laughs> <laughs> saved by the bell <laughs> yeah. well thank you for coming on and um come come on again and show us some of the things you know but i definitely think it'll be yeah no that'd be popular. great i'll definitely come on again and yeah. uh, show you some of the work the students do and yeah. yeah that'd be really good did anybody have any questions sorry to ask marie does anybody have, have any questions no no, she's she's answering everybody's <laughs> questions. So I think am I am I handing back over to you, Stella? Or... Yeah, you can do. Yes. You can do if you want. Well, we're gonna get Linda. She's back. Linda's back. She's there. So, she's back. She's back. She's so been she... in the vortex. <laughs> <laughs> I just love Microsoft. Uh, oh yeah. It's always the Fantastic. same, Linda. It's always the same. So uh, yeah, uh, quick rundown on the Rural Advice Centre, whatever you wanted to say. Well, well Hayley did it really for me. I mean, obviously the Rural Advice Centre has continued to operate throughout lockdown. It's just that the office hasn't been open and we do hope to get it reopened again um, in the summer. But it was just to shout out the fact that we are having an AGM um, in the Memorial Hall, um, subject to the roadmap and, and the rules not changing. Um, so, yeah, come along and hear about what we've been doing for the, for the last year and what our plans are for the next year, because it's all quite exciting. And that was it. Thank you on that Good. one. Good. Another face-to-face another -face meeting going ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Never know. 
Um, so we're going to bring in Liz now, and, and I misnamed you on my little introduction, not today, yesterday, and I'm thinking, I know your surname, I know your surname, and I came up with the wrong one, so I do apologise, and I hope, hope not too many people notice, uh, but the lovely, lovely Liz Norton, are there real books behind you, Liz? Or is that oh, some yes, of the they are. Oh, yes, they are. That's very good. Um, so, oh, best let Steph in, he's ready. Um, so, uh, Liz, you're going to talk to us about your community calendar, I think. Well, yeah, actually, it links in a little bit with what um, Hayley was saying, in that how uh, it just feels like there's a little bit of energy around the village and that everybody's getting back to trying to sort things out. And it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. You know, those of you who've known me for a long time have known I've been involved with New Year's Eve parties at the Memorial Hall, breast cancer balls down on the football club in the marquee and all sorts of things over the years. Um, and I think really now more than ever as the village is growing, um, I think it would be really good to do what other communities do, which is to a couple of times a year, sometimes even just once a year. Um, I was talking to somebody that's out from South Scarlet and they were just saying that, you know, once a year they get together with a big calendar and they put on the sort of things they're going to do throughout the year. And I just thought we've got such a friendly village and so many really nice groups that are around that actually if we could get everybody together with a, a nice big planner that said, OK, when are you thinking of your events and what are you and to try and complement each other and to just try and fit in all of these fantastic things so that it was a one stop shop that for number one, certainly people who were going to try and plan an event so they could go and have a look at it and see when would fit in through the year. But equally, if they want to do something, so particularly people who are new to the village and perhaps haven't got all the contacts that they might want, but they want to be able to see what's going on to get introduced to the village and be part of things, would be able to see. And I just think it's always such a shame when we, you know, we get to a nice weekend and actually there's 10 things on on one weekend and nothing for six weeks. And you just think, you know, with a little bit of planning and talking to each other, actually, we could have avoided that and all benefited from all of the people that want to go to everything. And so it's it's in its infancy. I just I put a little shout out on Facebook for those of you who do know me. I run the Collingham What's On site, which is a, a little group on Facebook. So it's a private group. You have to ask to join. We try not to do too many adverts and things. So it's it's sort of very <coughs> Collingham based for services for people within Collingham or nearby or that who work here. So it's sort of as a. Um, I do, I've been putting loads of posts on over the past year. I was just thinking back to all the stuff over the year that I've been sharing, just that somebody might be interested in who's maybe been furloughed or at home or what have you. Um, but I think as we're coming out of it, as uh, you know, as we've all said, that actually there's a few events going on and it seems like a really good time. You know, hopefully the roadmap permitting that we could perhaps get together all these people who have contacted me so far. So I've had a really good response. We've had the cricket club, we've had Oak Ridge, we've had the darts teams, we've had a lady that does Pilates in the village, we've had William Bailey House, the, the cycling club, Collingham Show, the two churches, the netball club, the Anglian Association, all people that generally actually don't really talk together that often about planning have all actually already personally messaged me and just said yeah we're in for it this is my contact details so I would just really like to shout out to anybody who hasn't got in touch with me already um, I mean dead easy to find on Facebook so if you're on Facebook <laughs> find me uh, Stella will have my contact details um, you, I'm happy for you to share my email to anybody else who wants to know thank you Stella and um you know we'll try and hopefully maybe get a meeting together towards the end of june um all being well and maybe all get together in the youth and community center or whoever will give us a free big enough room to get everybody around a big planner and we'll just have a little bit of a chat and see if anybody's got things already penciled in where we can see where the clashes are then and we can see if anybody wants to alter something or not they might choose to go ahead anyway but also maybe to have some ideas about where we're going to put this because I think it needs to find a home as well and so um, you know I think there's a lot of exciting things going on and you know there's the, you know the Collingham Community Fund um, where you know there's all different little things going on there that people will be able to apply for and by bringing all these representatives of these groups together in one place it would sort of be able to 
uh, marry in with all of these sort of things and have a central point um, to, you know, look at um, the new initiatives that are going ahead as well. So I know that um, uh, Gusto, for instance, on their new um, uh, phase for everybody that works there and everybody who lives there are going to be able to be given an amount of money to be given into the Collingham Fund and that is incredible. So, um, you know, going forward, there will be an awful lot of funding about for various different things. So I think it's, um, uh, you know, it's an amazing thing that Gusto are doing. And, um, you know, also really exciting as to uh, having, you know, that amount of money um, put into local things and certainly for local groups and um, community groups and charities and things that are around and about. Um, you know, to really embed that new community into the rest of the village is actually really exciting. And um, and you will know probably about that already, Stella, do you? Yes, we do. Uh, Steph did come on and talk about it on the last conversation. So. There you go. And I mean, you know, it's, in, it's I'm got working out where I'm going to spend it now. So. I know. Well, you know, and I think there's, there's room there to be able to sort of, uh, you know, let people sort of not all bid for it, but to let make people aware of what is going on and what groups do and you know that's that's all about building uh, communication throughout the village and what this Collingham conversation has done over the past year I think has actually started to really you know engage people who maybe wouldn't have been engaged before and I think you know I think certainly for new people coming into the village and making their home here you know what an exciting place we are really you know we, we don't often think about how you know what a nice community it is and how you know how open we all are to new people coming in with new ideas and you know the uh, certainly things like the Collingham uh, Community Fund and things are just they're just they're unique I think in a lot of ways to our area and we should be celebrating that wherever we can really um, and so hopefully you know the community calendar will sort of you know, enable more things to get back to normal, help us get a load of events that we can all go to and wear all our clothes that we haven't worn for over <laughs> the last year and have a reason to put a hat on and all of that sort of thing. Jewellery. Yeah, jewellery. We can wear jewellery. We can buy And have our nails done at home. Come and have your nails done. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go to all the beauty therapists. And, and, uh, yeah, and I mean, I think it's just, like you say, it feels really positive at the moment. And I think the more we can do to, you know, bring everybody together and... You know, it's only a good thing, I think, you know, and like you say, a lot of people have been very lonely over the past year. Mm. And I think if we can keep building on those things by keeping those networks all going and connecting people, um, it, I think we've all realised that's what it's all about, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Thanks, yeah. Liz. That's brilliant. Oh, you're very welcome. You. Nice that's to brilliant. see you all. And you, Liz. I'm sure I'll see you soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, before we go on to uh, the big spring clean, uh, sort of chronologically, really, I have said that I'll do a shout out for the Friends of John Blow School who are having their yard sale. You will have seen, uh, hopefully, various Facebook, social media, word of mouth things about their yard sale. Uh, you will know that you will see Mary and myself uh we're having one on our drive so uh we're going to raise money for our rotary club so uh we've got various people dropping stuff off as uh, every day nearly uh but uh it, it's five pounds for a table um they there is an email address if anybody wants it i'll put it up on the uh on the chat if you want that uh, and uh coming out in liz in a minute uh, and, uh, the, so it's the 23rd of May. There will be a map of all the plots in the village uh, for people to pick up and go round. Uh, and I think it's going to be a cracking day. Liz? Do you know, that's a great call, shout out, that is, Stella, because actually um, the show house down on the... Um, the show bungalow uh, down on uh, Bowfield, um, just off the hedgerows there, is actually also registered Excellent. for for the yard sale uh, on the Sunday. So we're open actually on the Saturday and the Sunday, um, but we have registered there so people can come along and see us as well, Stella. So that's, that's brilliant. Great. Hey, hey. <laughs> I thought well, we'd get that in. I did promise as I paid my <laughs> £5 this morning. That's brilliant. Thanks, Liz. Um, and then I don't know who's going to talk about the big spring clean. Is that Karen or is that Linda? Linda's well, got I, I asked Karen, 
unless Karen particularly wants to, it was me that was down to do it originally. And um, we just one eye on the time. I was going to talk a bit about Collingham Green Vision, which is the new green group that we've just launched in, in Collingham and um, our aims and aspirations and, 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 and wanting to engage with as many community groups and individuals as we can. But I'll, I'll put that back onto the agenda for next month, I think, Stella, because I can see Jean um, warming up on, on her um, flute or... So, it but just a shout out. Today. Clarinet is it? I can't, yeah, it's hiding, brother. So, um, can I just announce a um, shout out for the big spring cleanup, which is a sort of our launch event, which will take place on the 29th of May. It's um, a pick essentially, but um, we'll have a stall on um, Stocks Hill from 10 till 4, and um, we'll have some fun quizzes and activities um, around a recycling theme there. So, uh, get the kids along. Um, we're trying to involve as many of the young ones as we can and um, I look forward to seeing you there and um, watch out for the posters and um, I'll come back next month and talk about Collingham Green Vision at length because it's it's really exciting and we need to get as many people involved in that as possible um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that for now thank you yeah that's good yeah Rodney and stopped me and, and spoke to me about the spring clean and you know made sure I was definitely going to be there because he's going to be there too he was very excited about it so brilliant uh, that's good and I know Mary and Don take a bag and pick up rubbish every time they go out walking so uh, let's hope uh, the rest of the village uh, can get stuck in and uh, you know it's a nice way meeting people uh, having a walk, picking up rubbish, uh, and making the place look better. So, uh, yep, hopefully we'll all be there. So, uh, sorry, Mary. Speak. I want to ask Linda a question. Oh, um, you. you can't get. I, I mean, she's such a busy lady. Um, Linda, is there any room for anything that I can help on that on a sitting down capacity? Well, I'm sure the answer is yes, Mary. So I'll think of something and, and come back to you. But thank you. Yeah. Thanks, bring Mary. My, I'll bring my seven-year-old along and she can mm -hmm. um, she can definitely help. We've we'll got put lots up a of, tree or something. We've got lots of um, grabbers and gloves and things. <laughs> That's brilliant. So I think uh, from Linda, Haley, and myself, we want to say uh, coming to a close now for... Uh, the uh, May, can you believe it's May edition of the Community Conversation? Uh, and uh, it's been fun. Every time we get lots of new things and some really very motivated um, and inspiring people. So thanks everybody uh, for um, everything you've done today. Um, as we say, particularly for those of you with uh, businesses, it does go out on Facebook Live. We get quite a lot. Liz shares it all with her Facebook groups, I, you know, we try and share it around and please feel free to uh, share the Collingham Conversation Facebook uh, entries with whichever you know, groups you're in as well, um, because uh, that's the way to get things noticed. Um, so I see Jean's poised. My mum, Jean lives next door to me, for those of you who don't know, and my mum has said Jean's been playing some very nice music. So I'm expecting a lot tonight, Jean. So over to you. Good morning, good morning, my pretty little miss. The beginning of my song, I said to her, won't you marry me? She answered, I'm too young. The younger you are, the better for me. More fitting to be my bride. I courted her by compliment till I got her to comply. The night has passed and the day has come. The morning sun does shine. Oh, I will arise, put on my clothes, and then, sweet love, I'm gone. Oh, that's not what you remember to me, or down on the greenwood tree. You promised for to marry me and make me your sweet child. If 
ever I promised to marry you, it was all in a merry mood. For I will avow and I will swear I never was born for you. <laughs> Oh, girls can go to the market town, go dressed so neat and fine, while I, a poor lass, must stay at home and rock the cradle and spin. There is a herb in father's garden, and sometimes they call it brew. The fish will dive and the swallow fly. But a man will never be true. Thanks, Jean and Tom. I'm guessing you're sat around the corner there. Don't forget to pull the wheelie bin out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's lovely thank you everybody thank See you everyone thank, thank you, you. <laughs> bye bye good night good night good night